my worst nightmare before I was sworn in as a judge was I could imagine myself sentencing someone and saying, therefore, and in light of all that I've said, I'm sentencing you to f f to f f f f to f OK, let's make it three years imprisonment. Three and a half year old Brooklyn is a typical young boy who loves nothing better than playing with his toys. Well, overall, Brooklyn is such an active child and he is totally confident in every aspect of his life. He's a million miles an hour. He's just the kind of kid that goes into everything full on. Who's this? But there's one thing that's a bit different about Brooklyn. We've actually noticed a stutter probably for the last six months. It started pretty gradually. He would have a week where he was quite bad and then he'd have a week where there was almost nothing at all. So we weren't really sure whether it was a concern at first. Gradually it sort of became more constant and it's now at the stage where it's a regular occurrence. Brooklyn's Plunkett nurse referred him for an assessment at the Stuttering Treatment and Research Trust, or START. Parents, when they come in, are really concerned. Sometimes their child will go from being this very bright verbal child who has had no issues with their speech and language development and then all of a sudden, overnight, they can wake up and be stuttering. We explain to parents that there's usually sort of four types of stutters. So you can repeat a whole word. So you might say, can, 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 can I have a drink? So that would be repeating a whole word. Repeating part of a word, so that would be saying, k -k 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 can I have a drink? Um, stretching out a sound, so that would be more like saying, can I have a drink? Or blocking on an initial sound, so going to say a sound and nothing coming out. So like, can I have a drink? And there's a lot of effort behind it. Brooklyn is showing signs of all four types of stutter, but also has many clear patches. These are what therapist Janelle will focus on increasing. Hey, look, I mean, I just do it off by myself. My hands getting dirty. And what we're working towards is the children being able to talk without any bumps, so without any stutters in their talking. And we start with them just being able to say words smoothly and then being able to say little phrases and then sentences and, and build it up that way. You will again, JT. Talk back. 0800 Radio Live. You've got the two big unions, which are in the, la uh, the Labour Party. It's Politician, union organiser and broadcaster Matt McCartan has learned to manage his lifelong stutter, but it still pops up in his everyday life. Um, uh, Jerome Me Meeker and so... Over the years I've been involved in, in political organising really, uh, probably uh, for the last 20, 25 years. Currently I'm the uh, what they call the secretary of a union, the Unite Union, which is um, the, the head of it, um, and that represents low paid workers and I do a lot of negotiations, a lot of talking. Right. Not bad for a stutterer. Matt has never let his stutter affect his political career, and he recalls a time when he went head to head with John Tamahere, now his friend but once his adversary on Willie Jackson's TV show Eye to Eye. John Tamahere goes, Why is he getting more time? And he said, Because he stutters, he needs more time. <laughs> and he goes, You just give him extra time just because he stutters. He said, You should just get the same time as the rest of us. Yeah. And I'm thinking, Shh. Shut up. <laughs> Victoria Mardell has been managing her stutter from early childhood. As you get older, you become more aware of your um, differences, and having a disfluency is, a, is or it, um, it um, can be a very obvious um, difference. Things can kind of um, feel like they're a much bigger deal. So you, you know, like you think, oh, you know, this is terrible. I'm, not ever going to be able to, you know, like um, work or go on a date or you know something like that. Like you just have these it becomes a really big deal. There's always been lots of weird and wonderful reasons as to why people stutter. The current research indicates that it's a problem with the neural processing underlying speech production in the brain. And we also know that males are much more likely to stutter than females. So for every female that stutters, there's four to five males who stutter. I, I can't remember not stuttering. I can't remember not stuttering. So I was always uh, a child which wrestled with language. 
I was brought up in an orphanage, so I just connected. You know, I was separated from my parents at a very young age, so I just assumed it was connected. And so I just thought, oh, well, that makes sense, and so I'm going to have to stutter for the rest of my life. My younger brother was born when I was two and a half. The day that he arrived home, I'm told the hour that he arrived home, if not the minute that he arrived home, I started to stutter. Speech therapist Ros Young has a theory about why people stutter and how attitudes have changed. I think that there can be triggers that probably had the underlying predisposition there in the first place. The beliefs 30 years ago, they very much thought that it was to do with the parent's reaction to the child's disfluency that caused the stutter. But that is definitely not how we think about it now. It freaked out my parents. I remember um, we lived in a state house in Nanai and I came out of my bedroom one morning and I heard my Scottish dad saying, you know, do you think he's intellectually handicapped the way he dribbles and locks up with his speech? He didn't mean it as a criticism, he's just commenting, you know. But it went right into my soul and uh, that really affected me. Hi, I'm Ian Grant. Despite stuttering since the age of seven, Ian Grant has had a long career in broadcasting and public speaking. When I did television, you meet people in the street and they say, oh, look, I really enjoyed your show and that, and you go, then they go, oh, hey, you're tired. Hey, have you heard the latest stuttering joke, you know? And you'd have to smile and I've heard all the stuttering joke. I found I didn't stutter when I talked to big crowds. That, that was one of my pluses, I suppose. Ian Grant was able to teach students how to work in radio, but when it came to answering the phone, it was an entirely different matter. My, 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 my name is Ian Grant. If the phone rang and I picked it up, I would stutter. 17 students would think it was a joke I was having with the other person and they would laugh away and then slowly the penny's dropping. He really does stutter on the phone, so you, you live with all those um, uh, crazy sort of things in life, you know. Also affected by a stutter is Principal Youth Court Judge Andrew Beecroft. It's a division of the District Court. There are 45 or so district court judges who are also designated to do the youth court work. And I lead that work, and that's about four to 5,000 who come to court each year. Former All Black Royce Willis is also in the public eye and has stuttered from an early age. I first, I first started to stutter when I was four years old. I was at a kindergarten and I just came home, mum and dad said it you know, kind of happened over the space of a couple of days. Uh, before then I was, you know, talking pretty normally. All of a sudden, couldn't really talk properly. I began to stutter when I was about seven. I put up my hand to answer a question in, um, in class and the words just couldn't come out at, at all and it was really, I was really upset and Embarrassed, I think, a little bit as well, because obviously I was talking um, differently to, you know, to um, to um, the rest of my uh, um, of my um, peers. Is the hamburger go there? Far from being abnormal, people who stutter have a physiological and genetic predisposition to stuttering. We know that there's quite a strong family history involved in stuttering, so if you've got a family member who stutters, then there's a much greater risk that a child of a person who stutters will also stutter. Five-year-old Luke had members on both sides of his family who had been affected by stuttering. I stuttered from about the age of five. There was quite a few people like um, teasing me and all that about my stuttering and that, and that, I found that really hard and really confronting. So, and then just carried on stuttering, I suppose, my whole life, and then I just managed to control it sort of thing. But then when I seen my son stuttering, you know, it really got us, you know, working out, you know, where could we go. He was uh, getting to a point where he was completely frustrated about what he was trying to say. Would often just stop talking because he couldn't express himself, couldn't get his ideas out. I lost a lot of confidence and I think I withdrew from a lot of uh, conversations and I also hid from uh, teachers. I really do think that was because you know, of my stuttering, I wasn't willing to engage people and uh, you know, get involved in conversation and uh, to ask a question in class would be one of the most terrifying things on earth for me. 
If stuttering isn't treated early, anxiety about talking can become part of the problem. Boys tease me about it, but they tease boys for all sorts of things, whether they're fat, have red hair, bad breath. But my nickname for a long time at school was just Tutter. I was known as Tutter. But I remember one teacher, when I left school, said to my parents, well, there'd be three things that Andrew could never do, the church, the law, or teaching. And funny enough, each of those three were things that interested me. And I guess mum and dad had a bit of a sinking heart when they heard that. There were tears at night when they were talking about things. If they'd seen me, I remember once I had to read a lesson at the Anglican church we went to, and it was a bit of a disaster. I'm not quite sure how it finished, but I know that hit Mum pretty hard at the time, thinking, well, is he ever going to be able to speak in public?